Hi there, I'm Deborah Prinzing, and you're invited to join me in the Slow Flowers Movement. Simply put, the goal of the Slow Flowers Movement is to inspire the floral industry and consumers to embrace local, seasonal, and sustainable flowers. And now, my new book, The Slow Flowers Journal, tells the story of the people, passions, and breathtaking artistry behind each bloom we love. Slow Flowers Journal, Volume 1, shines a light on the leaders, best practices, inventive floral artistry, and creative experiences that are changing the floral marketplace, while also connecting you with the origin of local and sustainably grown flowers. 80 Slow Flowers members from across the U.S. and Canada are featured in the book's 128 pages, illustrated with more than 150 photographs that immerse you in a beautiful life with flowers. You might know me as a home and garden writer who took a new professional path about 10 years ago when I fell down the rabbit hole of all things floral. My love affair wasn't just with any flower though. It was deeply connected to domestic flower farming and sustainable floral design, the core themes of the Slow Flowers Movement, which I am proud to have created. I've conducted thousands of interviews for the Slow Flowers podcast and for my magazine and online articles, documenting the cultural shift toward a seasonal and local flower philosophy. I first documented the people at the heart of the Slow Flowers movement in my book called The 50 Mile Bouquet, published in 2012. One year later, in 2013, I created Slow Flowers, a very personal floral design book, a collection of the bouquets I designed each week for an entire year, using only what I clipped from my Seattle garden or purchased from local flower growers. So much has happened since then, including a heightened awareness of green practices throughout the floral profession, and this new book embodies those changes. Hot off the press, my newest book, Slow Flowers Journal, Volume 1, is more than a collection of pretty flower stories. Here are some highlights, chapter by chapter. I begin with the Slow Flowers Manifesto, originally written in 2017. The manifesto is important reading, illustrated with a lovely image from my friends and supporters at Johnny's Selected Seeds, which spell out slow flowers in petals from their test garden in Maine. Next up, a chapter about slow flowers heroes, with stories of five women who nurture meaningful connections between their customers and flowers. Each one has created a platform and brand around locally grown beauty, but also around, around community and sustainability. You'll love reading their stories. The florist farmer chapter is in many ways the heartbeat of slow flowers. Each of the 13 people featured in this section is both a grower of flowers and a designer of flowers. There's an interesting cross section where they have centered their businesses, which really defines the slow flowers movement and underscores how the art of flower farming and the art of floral design are so interdependent. In the Business of Flowers chapter, you'll meet seven florists in the retail and online space who share their experiences while discussing how to create a marketplace that connects customers with local and seasonal blooms. A favorite highlight of this chapter is a gallery of eight mini profiles of local flower marketing inspiration from members in the U.S. and Canada. For your sheer visual delight, the theme of the longest chapter is Botanical Couture, featuring floral fashions from past American Flowers Week campaigns. Your imagination will run wild after you see garments constructed with every flower and foliage imaginable, grown and even foraged by our Slow Flowers members. We've gathered 15 looks to wow you and include both practical and fanciful tips from the artists who made them. The idea for a farm to tabletop chapter came from my editor, Robin Avni, as she encouraged me to share inventive ways that agritourism, dining and entertaining, not to mention education, are driving a new population of fans to flower farms. With five flower-centric gatherings in these pages, you'll learn from the growers and designers who created each. The chapter ends with an insp inspiration gallery of stunning seasonal tabletop vignettes from eight of our members. Slow Weddings highlights couples who care about seasonality, sense of place, and sustainability, 
especially in their flowers, and you'll fall in love with our beautiful wedding stories, including ceremonies that take place along the coast of Hawaii's Big Island, at a winery outside of Seattle, on the river's edge in Oregon's Rogue River Valley, at a rustic lodge in snowy Vermont, and in urban settings like Brooklyn and Pittsburgh. We wrap up this chapter with a dazzling six-page gallery of bouquet inspiration, organized by season. It's one of my favorite all-time Slow Flowers collections because it showcases bouquet designs from 19 of our members, including one created by me. This special volume of stories ends with Slow Flowers resources, in which we share our member growers who supply seasonal cut flowers, foliage and branches on a nationwide basis, and several made in USA suppliers of vases and floral accessories we love. There's so much here to pursue your own embrace of local flowers, whether you're a flower enthusiast and gardener like me, or a pro who wants a more sustainable approach to your floral enterprise. I can't wait for you to read it from cover to cover. This book was designed so elegantly by Jenny Diaz, whose logos and graphic art have supported Slow Flowers endeavors for many years. Look for Jenny's own botanical couture project on page 83, a 1960s inspired mini dress made with orange and hot pink gerberas. Even Twiggy would love wearing it. I also want to give a shout out to photographer Missy Palacall, who is an essential part of the Slow Flowers team. Missy captured the book's cover photo in my own backyard with a portrait of me holding a just picked bunch of annual sunflowers and vivid dahlias and gladiolas. I grew the sunflowers from seeds given to me by Johnny Selected Seeds, and I grew the summer flowers with tubers given to me by Longfield Gardens. In the background of this photo, you'll see my cherished greenhouse, a focal point of my Slow Flowers cutting garden, made in Oregon at Northwest Green Panels. By the way, the title Slow Flowers Journal comes from an online magazine I originally created in January of 2017. I wanted to tell engaging stories about our Slow Flowers members using striking photography to draw you in, much like a fashion magazine. Several months after I launched Slow Flowers Journal online, the established trade magazine Florist Review invited me to bring Slow Flowers Journal to its pages. We began that collaboration in August of 2017, and we've had a fantastic three-year run together, bringing hundreds of new creative voices into the floral marketplace through our content. In developing this book, Slow Flowers Journal Volume 1, and of course there will be a Volume 2 in the future, I worked closely with my editor and designer to collect the best stories that first appeared in the pages of Florist Review between 2017 and 2019, with an entirely new selection of images and updated text, plus 25% new content. Slow Flowers Journal is your guidebook to the Slow Flowers movement. I hope you're inspired to embrace this new model of conscious floral sourcing and sustainable design in your own floral lifestyle. Thanks so much for reading. You can learn so much more by visiting us at slowflowersjournal.com. See you online.